Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what's going on? Welcome to another Ultra Sword podcast. And I've got a very special guest today, someone who is one of the core creators behind the podcast. I'm joined by Mickey. Mickey, how's it going? Good, mate. Good, good, good. Very good. excited. A lot happening, but uh, yeah. Very exciting. World Cup fever. We could have almost recorded our conversation before the camera turned on. Lots of podcasts and World Cup talk, obviously. So, World Cup fever, it's in the air. We've got the kits behind us. I just got this Argentina kit last uh, yesterday. Banger. But I'll tell you what, Mickey. One of my favourites, that one. They might not be my pick. And I've, I spoke about it a little bit last week, but... You can't, you can't be wearing that and, and pick what <laughs> I think you might be picking. I, I, you know, look, we'll touch on that after. We're going to go through all the group stages and... <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit controversial. I've got some controversial calls. I'm starting, starting to get noted a little bit for just having some outrageous yeah, takes. Good. But it's good. Got to get mi- the uh, controversy out there. It. But I've heard some of your calls, Mickey, as well. And you know, it's, it's good vibes around here, good energy. And I think before we start, just because I'm so excited about it, the pitch here that we're recording on, yes, it's got to become the live site. Yes. So, I mean, you probably know better than me. Do you want to explain a little bit? Yeah, so... Um, oh, sorry, I'll just push it we're up. We're going to have a... Just a little bit. Push it up a little bit. Push it up a bit. Sorry. Um... We are doing, so that wall over there, I was just saying to Costa before, that wall I think is 3.8 metres high. Uh, the TV is 3.6. Jeez. So it's going to be high. It's going to be uh, wall, six metres wide or something. So if you're keen to watch some games uh, in the world's best store down here in Melbourne, um, get down here. There's going to be high tables along the backside. It's going to be heaps of bean bags. There's going to be food and drink by Penenka, of course. Perfect. Um, this zone where we're sitting right here is being taken over with a Nike installation. So if you're a if you're a kit connoisseur and a fan of the Socceroos and you love some of the names of like the the 05 and 06 era, uh, you'll definitely love what's going to be happening behind us. Um, so yeah, good vibes. Um, I saw Fed Squares back. Yeah, I they saw only that. came back after a bit of a push from some, <laughs> of the, some of the people in the scene. So if you want to do it at the place that was always going to stay true and have the games come here and uh get to yeah, stay there'll be a good vibe get to stay warm inside as well i know it's roof. meant to be summer but it's still yeah. cold and yeah, indoors Melbourne, here you never know so if it's In- raining get a ticket come here it's gonna be it'll be pretty cool i'm very keen you a lot of us will be here. some of your favorite ultra sword guests will, will be here yeah, as well yeah. in, in the crowd yeah. uh, but it's, it should be really cool australia france on a wednesday morning i can't wait it sounded like and we That's spoke it. about it before how cool for us here how cool the times are 9 p.m game Never again. 3 a.m. I mean, the 3 a.m., it's a bit tough for me. I like yeah. my sleep. It's a yeah, bit tough. Yeah, yeah. 6 a.m., perfect. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. So it's got to be very cool. We'll, we'll never gonna... get that chance again. Summer, those time slots. Got to make the most of it. It's a special one. So before we get into World Cup, we've got to tease him a little bit. There's a particular player called Cristiano Ronaldo, and it feels too big to ignore it. Can't gloss over. I'm obviously a Man United fan. I speak about United every week on this. Ronaldo comes out, and for those who don't know, quickly, he comes out, does an interview, pretty much... Slates, Manchester United, the Glazers, all that sort of stuff, comes out, makes a couple of comments about Ten Hag. I think the first problem with him was he did an interview with Piers Morgan. And I think flog. everyone knows that. Massive he's, flog. He's Massive a CR7 fanboy as well. Yeah, so which, it was a match made in heaven exactly. for Piers. And the, the wage and the, the bag that Cristiano Ronaldo got for that interview probably wasn't pretty slim either. So you'd, you'd expect he got a big check for that one. Oh, yeah. I love Ronaldo too. I've never been that Ronaldo fanboy like everyone else. Like I've been, I've been that weirdo that sits on the fence a little bit. I love both. You're a bit of that trendy sort of hipster sort yeah. of person. <laughs> but I mean, I agree with everything that he came out and said about the Glazers, and I think he needs someone to come out and say that stuff because we know how bad I guess they are. And him saying that Manchester United's become a marketing club, which I think is every club now. Like I think just the way it, everything's developed and football's so he, developed. He said they've become a marketing club. Yeah. So the marketing club that. Exactly. Signed Cristiano Ronaldo when he was out of his peak. And exactly. And I think Ronaldo kind of forgets that probably now he's the biggest marketing tool that anyone's going to 100%. use. On the, Wh- on the planet for whether the last exactly, 15 years. Whether it's a football team or a fragrance, he's their biggest marketing pool yep. now. So him to say that, it's obviously a bit, okay, fair enough, whatever. You believe what you want to believe. But then the only thing that really bothered me and actually got a bit flat about everything was just the comments about Ten Hag. Yes, he might not be his cup of tea. I've had managers that I hated, but in Ronaldo's position, I, for as long as you're his boss and he's your boss, 
I don't think you come out and say anything. You back him. You'll see teams that go on a six, seven game losing streak and they'll come out in the interview and know that probably because they have to say it. They go, you know, no, the manager's still got my backing. He's trying to get stuff around. Whereas Ronaldo comes out and shoots it down straight away. Well, I guess are your thoughts on, I guess, someone like Ronaldo, who everyone's saying may United's ruining his reputation. I think that did a lot worse than him uh, for his reputation than 100%. playing at Manchester United did. Yeah. What are your thoughts on someone like Ronaldo coming out and showing and exposing, I guess, the club and his thoughts that much while he's still a contracted Manchester United player. Nah, like, to... Ronaldo's a great player, but I think with every decline, there's going to be some people that handle their declines better than others. He's obviously a freak athlete, works harder than probably anyone on the planet. Not having that... um, right, I guess, to start every game as he wants to yeah. uh, is definitely affecting him. 100%. I think he's using this moment with Piers as a get me out of here, yeah. maybe we can work out because, again, no one's going to sign him in January when he's got the contract I think until August. Yeah. So maybe there's going to be some sort of handshake where it's like, best for both parties, we'll break it off. He's got his ability to say his side of the story before the World Cup. Yeah. He'll focus on the World Cup with Portugal, probably gets back after the World Cup, figures out a move somewhere else. I think yeah. that's what's going to happen. But the, the undermining of the, the coach, like, I'm a Liverpool fan, so I can't, I can't say I'm that sad about the situation. <laughs> but the thing with Ten Hag, right, he's trending upwards. And, yeah. and you can see his, where some other managers have failed at Man United in recent past. He's got the strength and the, I guess, the, um, the ability to believe in his... Uh, methods, what he's yeah. doing, where he wants to take him to say, like, you're not going to be part of yeah. this. 100%. And they've been trending upwards. So the timing, I don't know, e- everything stinks in one way, but it's, it's, it's the Ronaldo show. He's, yeah, he's doing 100%. it for a reason. And, uh, and he obviously knows how big of a superstar he is. And doing it now, or I guess the thing releasing now to everyone, he's not going to walk into Manchester United for the next month or so, you know? So yeah. it's almost like it's a bit of a safe bet. I mean, there was yeah. that video going around of him and Bruno Fernandes then George Mendes just came and said it was a, bit, it was a hidden joke sort of thing. So, I mean, the, the media's obviously got to try and find every little snippet 100%. to try and make it seem like it's, it's a lot more dramatical than what it is. But it is that thing of where does he actually go? Like, I, I was speaking to people here yesterday. and There's links to the A-League now. I saw uh, Danny sure Townsend's that. in the regu- regular contact. You, you know what I would actually do with that? I'd give him part ownership in a club. Where? And Sydney? You can see him yeah, at it's, Sydney It's FC. going to have to be a Sydney FC or... I mean, for as long... I mean, Nani could be a bit of a factor to come to victory, but, I mean, there'd have to be a little bit of an under-the-table job for the wage bracket sort of thing. 100%. I don't know um, how it's going to work, but... But you, 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 the only ones you'd think of are, are City, Victory, Sydney. Yeah. Even maybe a Wanderers, but... I mean, no, no, they've got their issues, but... But that, that's the way I'd, I'd try and bring him over, because I know the MLS aren't shy of giving players like that like I think Messi will go in when he I think when he moves Definitely. eventually to an, into, into Miami, Miami which I think is a set in stone yeah. I think they'll give him part ownership of a bit of, of yeah. a club and which will be massive and in doing that it, I guess I mean they're obviously at the end of their careers it gives them something after football too it gives them obviously a bit more of an incentive as well yeah uh, that, so that, that, that'd be my way of how to bring try and lure Ronaldo to the A-League we'll see is it going to happen I don't think it's going to happen I think uh a guy with that ego and a guy that's willing to to put a big target on his on his back uh, with the Man United fans and basically yeah. the whole football world, he obviously still thinks he can play at the highest level. But you're right, like, when he went to United, it was, where's he going to go? There was Man City, that thing's definitely not going to happen. <coughs> PSG, I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, yeah. Back to Real Madrid, I think he would probably like to go back to Real Madrid, but I don't think I that's going to happen. It's really hard. Like yeah. it's um, and again, like you said, he said Man United's a marketing club. I think whichever top European club, if they were to sign Ronaldo now, is purely for shirt sales. Yeah, like a Bayern Munich, I don't think they should sign a Ronaldo. Yeah, PSG, I mean, they'll probably do it, mm-hmm. but for as long as Messi's there, who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, It'd be cool to see them together, even for a yeah. brief period. I mean, if there's a team that can do it, it's yeah. PSG. Yeah. So, uh, this could be interesting. Let us know in the comments down below as well where you think Ronaldo, I guess, would go after. Because it almost it felt like a goodbye sort of speech. Hopefully, sort of like, again, I, I can't see him doing it yet. But if he goes back to Portugal and plays at the, yeah. the hometown club for a couple of seasons... But I just yeah. you, you, so that's the thing. You just feel like he's such a... I feel like Messi will, will realise when he's ready to sort of... 
take his family somewhere and yep. just play in the MLS sort of thing. Whereas yep. I feel like Ronaldo just thinks he can play 45 years old yep. in the Champions League. Yep. And I think for the first time, the last sort of part to touch on this, I think for the first time he's kind of realised that, OK, maybe the manager and the club and the team, the whole system doesn't revolve around me for once. Yep. Which, like, it would be hard for him to sort of, I guess, comprehend because for pretty much his whole career, it was... What's Ronaldo got to do? 100%. We're going to play to his strengths. Yeah. Where it's yeah. now, it's like, whoa, you're a bit slower. You don't offer the, us this. You don't yeah. offer us We've this. We've got to play the way to suit you uh, exactly. and all that stuff. Yeah. And I guess he, he's so... It's not a knock on him to say he is so uh, confident in his own ability, even at 37 years old, that yeah. he thinks that the game should still revolve around him. Exactly. So exactly. if there's a club out there that wants to to have him there and, and not much pressing and just get on the end of things. He's probably still going to score goals and be successful, yeah. but which club it is, I, I don't know. We'll see you at Melbourne Victory next year, Cristiano. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. You can come on With the Nani. podcast too when you yeah. come next year. That'll be massive. Now, we'll touch into, touch into the World Cup now because all well, the club football stopped. The World Cup, it's around the corner. We're going to go through each group's the, uh, group and just going to give me your top two who you think will go through. And then once we go through it, some of them will go through a little bit quicker. Some of them we'll, we'll have a chat yep. about because we're looking at Group A. Qatar, Ecuador, Senegal and Netherlands. Yep. Senegal come out with big news at the point of recording this. Massive. Sadio Mane, we knew he was injured, yep. but there were talks of him still going and probably missing just the first or second group yep. stage. He's out of the full World Cup. That's massive news. You're a Liverpool fan yourself. Yeah, I would have loved to... That. I would have loved to see him uh, play, especially in this group. I still think they'll get through um, in second. Um, hopefully, like there's just a bit of a spirit and camaraderie there if uh, they can sort of do it for Mane um, yeah I just I, I feel like at, at Bayern he's doing okay but like the, the limelight's gone off him a bit yeah. I feel like he would have exploded at the World Cup Senegal could have had a bit of a run like they had in 2002 where it's massive excitement and they're stuff a, like that they're a fun so, team as well I think everyone yeah. loves a bit like Senegal like, 100% you know, cool of Bayern defence I've got some good young wingers that's, that will probably come into his position as well now yeah. so uh, the World Cup's a perfect chance for those players who maybe don't show that much you know, they might be playing in the Eredivisie or something where, like, a sort of a lot of, I guess, neutral fans aren't really watching week in, week out. It's a yep. good opportunity for them to come in and take their spot. 100%. They'll be, they'll be still absolutely worth watching. You can, yep. you can have no doubt about that. The host nation, obviously, in this group as well. There's a stat of like the last four out of five uh, hosting nations have advanced through yep. to the to the round of 16. Yep. I was watching World Cup highlights on the last one in Russia. I remember that they went on that crazy sort yeah. of group stage run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Golovin, hey. the midfielder, got Sherry signed from Monaco and after. Like, yeah, unbelievable team. There was a lot of excitement around them. And they had the big. Who was the big lad up front? Um, uh, Dzuba. Dzuba. Yeah, yeah. Dzuba. They, were, they just played very Russian as well. Which, yeah. Where yeah. They just kept on getting results, which yeah. was pretty. I mean, it's cool to see the the host nation. I guess do well. Obviously, you've got all their home fans there, but. Can you say Qatar getting out of the round of 16? Honestly. At a group stage show? I, Ellie, who's down here for the Adidas, Adidas event, he was sort of saying he, he might be able to see them getting through because they've done all right on the, on the continent scene. But I don't know, man. I, I've looked through their starting lineup the last few games. Like, I'm hey. going to be honest. I don't know any, <laughs> any Qatar players. Well, there's um, something like 10, 11, 12 players that could represent another country yeah, as well. So sort just of nationalise them. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I they might have a bit of a run with a bit of home crowd and a bit of that, a bit of buzz, but I don't think so. I think it, uh, it won't be one where the host nation gets through, I think. Yeah. So your top two to advance out of that group? Netherlands uh, and, and Senegal. Senegal. Interesting. I'm going to go... I think Ecuador could be a little bit of a smoker. Yeah, and yeah I think, you I think, before. I think Ecuador could be on that... They could be that team that sort of surprises a few and maybe reaches the quarterfinals with a couple of little sort of performances here and there. I think mm -hmm. they've just got, it's almost there from what I was reading and watching, they've got kind of their gen, golden generation right now. Yeah. Um, they've got the likes of you know, Caicedo and Estupi and the left back um, and other like little sort of decent squad players that not many people are going to be too familiar with, but they're players that do also play together as a team. And Ecuador, we, you know, you see a lot of these other countries, they play so much as a, as a solid unit. Yeah. I think Ecuador could fall into that bracket. I think with Mane out of that Senegal team, yeah. yeah. And I think Netherlands, Netherlands are good. And they're always, I guess... They don't that, fool you with a... They're, they're, they're trending up, but it's still yeah, not the Netherlands of old where, exactly. like, it's full confidence that they'll get through. Exactly like you look right. at the starting lineup, and there's still a few players there that you're not full household yeah. names. They're always that dark horse team... 
yeah. that just never get kicking sort yeah. of thing. You know, and it's and whether their their boat might have passed a little bit, similar to like a Belgium, who we'll yeah. touch on after. Yeah. But they've still got a pretty decent team. Obviously Van Dyke, it's his first World Cup, which is mm -hmm. pretty like crazy weird to think about considering his career he's had when he joined Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, but I think Netherlands won't have any issues getting through. Sneak They'll probably through. top the group. Yeah, uh, and I think Ecuador will sneak in in second I like, position. Yeah, as well. I don't mind the Ecuador thing as well because I think a big thing is going to be this. It's going to be hot. Yeah, and yeah. these <laughs> South American and Central American teams and stuff, they go through the sort of rigors of yeah. that. They're playing in Bolivia and all sorts of places that are really intense. Um, so if it's hot and it feels sort of that climate, yeah, um, yeah they That'll might be, be they might be used to it a li little bit better than. Yeah. Some of the the Netherlands and the, the likes. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I think the weather will be a big factor. I know they've got air conditioners and all that sort of is thing. Is the aircon happening? I think it is. Yeah. I mean, even? I so I actually watched Alex uh, interview Riley McGree. Yeah. The yeah. Um, they did the live thing and. You know, have Have you seen Nate Dog? Got I the, saw the that. birthday shout yeah, out. I saw so that. Nate, Riley McGree is watching. Thank yeah. you and Alex. Well done for setting that up. Yeah, we've had Nate on twice. I think this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, We've mentioned he's a big. Middlesbrough, Riley McGree fan. Yeah. I saw when Mitch shared it. I was, it was pretty cool. Riley McGree, cool. I'll tell you what. He's looking good with the moustache too, Riley. Yeah, the tattoos um, too. A bit of tattoo yeah. in culture there. Yeah, coming yeah, through yeah. the squad. Harry yeah, Suter's yeah, come yeah. in with... He's with, in with the... He's in the sexy 11, I'd, I'd say. Yeah, one, one, of the, one of the most handsome players in the, in the Socceroos. <laughs> he's one that I'd like to see start as well. We're going to touch on <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about Socceroos all day, but we'll touch on that. Uh, group B, let's say, this is actually an interesting one. Because you've got England, Iran, USA and Wales. Yeah, it's another like the groups are all hard. We were talking about this yeah. before. Like, there's 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 going to be some slip ups. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like, you could almost see one of the top teams in some of the groups almost falling into second and not really winning their group. I think in this case, look, it, I mean, Iran doesn't play beautiful football, but like Socceroos, we've played against the, the, the nations like that, and you know that it's a bit of a slog to sort of get past. Yeah. So someone like I guess USA might struggle against someone like an Iran. Yeah. Um, with Wales, all, how good they are. Yeah, well, Gareth Bale. Did you see he's the back, MLS yeah. Cup yeah, final? Yeah, yeah. You know he's going to have something to say, maybe, I don't know, against some of those teams, he's going to pop in with 100%. a... Who have you got goal. the top two to go through in this group? I think it's still... I think there's going to be slip-ups. Um, England will get through for sure. Yeah. Um, definitely, there's just too much quality there. Um, USA, I think, are going to come through second. But... You never know. Like yeah. Wales might push them all the way, and then you've also got Iran, who are going through problems back home, and they're going to yeah. be playing for their for yeah. their country, and yeah, you know that big spirit from their side. So it's going to be yeah. I predict a few like USA might stumble somewhere, but then sneak through. We'll see. Could, Wales. Could, this group could be that one where that sort of second position is shared. It's up for grabs. Teams. Yeah. yeah, I think England. The quality of England will. They'll yeah. be tough. Yeah, I mean, England, there's always so much hype around them and buzz around them. How far do you think England can go in this I World think, Cup? I think, I'm just looking here. I did the, uh, the old tournament predictor. The predictor? I think they're getting to the semi. I want to say that they're going to bomb out earlier. That's big. But I think they're getting to the semi. I think they're going to play France. Wow, so France in the semis too. Yeah, yeah. So I think England, England will, in the semis. They'll, uh, they'll get excited. It'll be coming home for a while and all that sort of stuff. But I think yeah. they'll, they'll fall just a little bit short again. Look, for the culture, you want to see them go far. And yeah, me yeah. personally, I don't really like them. So you want to see them go far and lose it just at the end. But yeah. at the same time, I mean... You know, we can replicate some of those, you know, like that. What's the that scenes, box? The box square, park. Box park that yeah, they've got in England. Yeah, if we get any of that here. Replicate that here. Yeah, when, yeah, yeah. When... Uh, Jamie McLaren scores a 90th minute header, header against France and we win 2-1. That'll be massive. Because we're getting out of the group, which we'll tap on up, touch <laughs> on after. Um, in no particular order, we'll go to the next one. Yep. Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico and Poland. Yes. I mean, you talk about another group. What a group that is. I know. Um, again, I, I, I feel like there's going to be some slip-ups there. Like, are Argentina going to draw with someone like a Mexico and, and yeah. Poland and have to use it as a bit of a, this isn't working? I think so. Um, I still think Argentina, we just, Correa's out. Literally yeah, just yep. before we started the pod, we saw Correa's out, so that's a big hole. Lo Celso, I think, will be a big hole for, yeah. for Argentina as well. He links up well with Messi. I still think uh, Messi and Argentina, they'll, they'll carry themselves to top, I think, in the group. Yeah, um, Yeah, you agree? Yeah, I, th I think Argentina, uh, there's something about them in the air. This they, yeah. And everyone you can tell is feeling it. And they're all smelling that same sort of sauce that Argentina are ready to provide. Yep. But that's where I think they might 
fail. Yeah, the Just expectation. The expectation. And I think and the same might be with Brazil. The expectation of Argentina and Brazil and yeah. everyone. I mean, you ask everyone around. Like most people here, I think, would say Argentina or Brazil. I've said it. I, I think, said I it think, I think that's the semi. Have you got them yeah. in, both in the semi? Yeah, I, I think if, if it goes to how most expected to go. Yeah. I think Argentina, Brazil semi-final was 100% on the yeah, cards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Mexico, again, they're a team that in the World Cup, they'll show up, a, you know, sometimes. I know they've got their own sort of issues with the whole squad and the manager having fallouts with other sort of players and this and that. And maybe the, the, the I guess, the, the togetherness might not be there mm-hmm. as much as some of the past Mexican teams. But you, you look at other teams like Poland. I mean, Matty Cash, you know. Matty Cash, yeah, love him. The, the, the uh, Polish he's, guy. He's, he's uh, transferred to to Poland to get some minutes, which is which is good. They need they need someone at the back. Um, Zielinski's been absolutely on fire yeah, for Napoli, good player. so he's peaking. Lewandowski, obviously. Um, they've got the young boy on the left from uh, Roma yeah, as well, that's right, the twenty-year-old. Yeah. Um, you, you feel like Lewandowski kind of needs, or not needs, but. A, a big World Cup showing by him, yeah, yeah. I think, will be huge for Lewandowski. Because, because I guess he's never played in the Premier League. And I think when in 10, 15 years to come, when we talk about some of the greatest strikers, Aguero will get thrown up, yeah. Rooney, or you know, even Harry Kane will get brought up because yeah, he's played yeah. in the Premier League all his life. Yeah. Lewandowski is going to be one of those that people will bring up, like, oh, I, I forgot how good he was, that sort yeah. of thing. Just in, because international of where stage, he's he, he doesn't. Yeah. yeah. The last, so my mum's side's got. Uh, Polish uh, heritage, so I, I keep an eye on things, yeah. and um, yeah, the la- every major tournament since about 2012, I think I've been excited for Poland, and they've <laughs> always they've always let me down. That's very true, yeah. Um, so expectation-wise, I'm going to go in with a little bit less, and uh, hopefully they sneak in second. Yeah. But you know, Lewandowski could easily score a bag against Saudi Arabia. Um, he might cu- get a couple in the other games. Don't, don't need, if, if he's scoring, then they've got a chance oh, to get through. Well. Got, but I think it'll be a... I don't know too much about Saudi Arabia. I think it'll be a flip between Mexico and Poland. For the second spot. For the second spot. So, and this is the thing. A lot of these, a lot of these uh, I guess, Asian, Asian countries and stuff. Like Jamie Carragher did his prediction and he had all of them just sitting rock bottom. Iran, Saudi Arabia, Australia, yeah, sitting rock bottom. It's and, definitely a bit of disrespect there. And, and it, it is one of those things where obviously watching the Socceroos and in, in, against all that qualifiers and stuff, although they don't have the quality and the star power and you know, they'll move the ball yeah. like, you know, like, like a France would, they're not easy teams to play against 100%. and to beat. You yeah. know, like sometimes the hardest teams to beat are those ones where it's just not ticking as you usually would like. I mean, Pogba said, you know, the last World Cup, and I think Thomas Deng raised it in his press conference I watched on YouTube the other day. He said that Australia was like the hardest game, like group stage game they played and one of the most difficult ones that they played in the yeah. whole tournament. Yeah. Purely because I think countries like this probably know that if we're going to try and beat them with the ball at our feet, it's probably not going to go well. Get in their face exactly. and make it hard. It's just going to be nice and tight. And I yeah. think and sometimes a lot of like someone like the Netherlands, I think maybe that's why they don't really perform to their best in the like, World Cup sort of scenarios because yeah. they're playing against a whole lot of different sort of tactics and, mm-hmm. and I guess, uh, player sort of personnel where yeah. it doesn't really... A lot of the players are obviously playing in, in the Euro- European leagues mm-hmm. where it, it is a little bit different, which yeah. makes the World Cup, I guess, so good as well because you can get someone, a smoky, just come up 100%. and do something crazy. That's the thing. These groups, you, you never know. Right? It's, it. it's, hard to, it's hard to really pick... It's hard to pick the out and out who's finishing last in yeah, the groups. Yeah, yeah, which is cool, which is what you want. Yeah. Now we're going to Group D. I yeah. mean, the group of... Oh, I was going to ask you who the group of death is. There is a lot of group of death. 100%. I still, like, there, there is a lot, but the, the one I keep thinking about and looking at at the moment is the, the Uruguay, South yeah. Korea, yeah, yeah. Portugal. Like, that's Ghana. Ghana. That's well. a tough that's a group. That's very tough That's group. like... Very tough But they're, they're, they're all tough. Well, we'll touch, we'll touch on that one now, Group H. We'll leave the Australia one for a little bit more as well, yep. so you've got to stay tuned and subscribe. Build, build to up to the, <laughs> the big moment. Now, Group H, you just mentioned Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, and South Korea. Yeah. I mean, South Korea, again, it's another one of these teams where they're a good footballing team. They've, also got, a, they've got a rich history in that Asian sort of um, yep. conference and the qualifiers and all that sort of thing. Uruguay, they're a team with some good players with good form. Fine. Felipe Valverde. Big fan of him. Ben Tinker. Ben Tinker as they well. They got the old guard as well. You just, 
I, I've got a, a good vibe about our uh, Uruguay, sorry, uh, at this World Cup, just because the, the Cavani's, the Suarez's, I think Godin's still in the squad. Yep. They're old, but I feel like that country's just such a fighting country. Yep. It's going to be hot. It's going to be a tough group. They're going to be crashing and bashing. Valverde can score from distance. Yep. I feel like... I feel like there's a bit of a vibe around Uruguay. Those players, I think you need in a World Cup a little bit. Like, yep. yes, it's exciting to have all these youngsters coming up. But a World Cup... You need Cup, experience. Nothing compares to a World Cup. So yep. likes of, I love Cavani when he was at United. Yeah. I was just I was disappointed to see like how it sort of faded out. He just didn't really want to play anymore. Yep. But No one loves scoring a goal as much as Cavani. Yeah, when he scores a goal and he's <laughs> just literally... It's like... It shows everything. Like a child, I love yeah. it. Yeah, and I think Cavani's one that still be putting up good performances for, for Uruguay. Sure. I mean, they've only got to play. You know, there's obviously the four games in the group stage. Yeah. And then the, up into the final, you're not playing. You're playing eight, nine games, I guess, if you make it to the very end. Yeah. Yep. So it's not a lot of games. And that comes into favour with the likes of a Cavani. He's not playing week in, week yep. out. So I think I know there's a bit Just of a quicker turnaround. Got to hit the ground running. And with Valverde, like, he's 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 unreal at I think the moment. Valverde, if Uruguay do well I think Valverde could be a smoky for player of the tournament agree because he's running carry that he brings through the midfield and agree. he's used to playing with the best in the yep. world where I think now he might step up a little bit as that sort of star player for Uruguay mm -hmm. I, think, I think he's got to absolutely live in that sort of he's like a coach's dream as well Valverde because he can play on the, the wing he can play in the middle he can play yeah. you could you probably play him anywhere yeah. and he, yeah, yeah. he'll do anything for club or country He's going to fill gaps where required. 100%. They're, they're, they've got a, one of the most informed players in the world that can literally play anywhere. So Definitely. it's a it's good, good so, one to have. So Uruguay will be a good team to see. And obviously we mentioned before as well that history that they've got with Ghana where you know, Suarez, yeah, Suarez had the incident. And Would you have done it? Oh. He's, a, he's a dog of a player. I love <laughs> Luis Suarez. He is, in all seriousness, he's, he might be the best player I've ever seen play for Liverpool. Those, yeah. those years, yeah, like yeah. Steven Gerrard is Steven Gerrard, but yeah. those years of Suarez, when he nearly won us a league by himself, yeah. I'll always have love in my heart for him. Yep. And I love the shithousery sort of stuff as well. Oh, you love it. You need it. Yeah. I, love, I love that stuff. Like Uruguay, if, they, if he doesn't put the hand up, they're going to they're gonna crucify him back home. You know, so I, would, I probably would have done you've it. You've got to do it. I think a lot of people would have done yeah. it too. The I Ghanaians, mean, would, shout out to them. Yeah, because that was sad, I think, but... I think that was like the, the, that would have been one of the first African countries yeah, to progress it was brutal. to that far sort of thing. So Absolutely brutal and absolutely Luis Suarez. Yeah, you'll have a bit of, bit of storyline <laughs> in it as well, a bit of WWE. Yeah, so it'll be tasty. It. I don't know if, it's, if anyone's going to try and go through him. He's easier to target now, Suarez, because he can't move around yeah. as much as he, <laughs> as he used to. So someone can, if he picks up the ball, someone's got the, uh, be, uh, the chance to go through him. It'll be interesting to see what his role is like in the Uruguay team. Yep. I don't think he's, he'll start every single game. Good one to have. If he's not starting but I mean, those last 10-15 I was going to say imagine you're Ghana you, you, you've held them you to don't a nil or 1-1 no, no. 75th minute you say no. Suarez about to come on you're like no, oh, okay, no. okay. You we'll, don't we'll want see that. how this goes yeah 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 not, not for me now the team that we haven't mentioned the nation that we haven't mentioned Portugal yes now, they're another team that they're just a bit confusing sometimes I mean their midfield is stacked and they've got a lot of young good players unbelievable talent like it's a, a really really good squad you've got yep. you know, Bruno Fernandes Bernardo Silva you've got uh Linha, who's at uh, Fulham, and he's, yeah. and he's been playing quite well you as well. You know who's just on absolute flames? Every time I watch Milan, Liao. Unbelievable. He's just, the, the, the way he, he's got the, the build and the speed, and he can just drift past players yeah. and come in. And he's a big boy. Yeah. Like, he's not a nippy little winger. He is a he's gun. A, he's, a, he's a big, big figure so as well. So, could be a moment for some of those players to... I was going to say... But the big one is your mate. How's so he's turned Cristiano. up and, and Bruno's not happy with him. There's yeah. no inside joke there. It's see definitely the, see the Joao Cancelo thing as well. No, uh, that was just on the training pitch and Joao Cancelo. I mean, that was a Man City thing, but it could be a little bit of that trust <laughs> thing of like if something happens in this Portugal yeah. sort of setup, you don't want it to is, disrupt the. Is he going to go to my mate Piers? So the, I think that the trust thing could be a little bit of a thing as well. But Cancelo was on the training pitch and they probably just, have just done a duel or played this little six v six sort of match. Yeah. And Cancelo standing still and Ronaldo comes over to him. Taps him and Ronaldo and Cancelo just pushes him off, sort of thing. Yeah, so, okay. So bit there's a bit, bit, of, bit of stuff happening. But you love the little snippets that somehow the media and stuff are going to take out of. Oh yeah, take it out. Hundred percent. He's going to be the talking point for the. He's ensured again that he's the the talking point for the yeah, for the yeah, tournament. Yeah, no, like, well, you know what's funny? As soon as I think everyone realised that, and people started to call it a little bit of you know Messi's World Cup sort of thing. Yeah. Argentina and Messi are going to do it. Mm -hmm. It's his last World Cup. Ronaldo goes and drops his bomb. And 100%. Ronaldo. And it's got to be interesting, like I mentioned previously, 
if Ronaldo doesn't start every game for this Portugal team or is not the main sort of player to play around, does that not play into his sort of, I guess, aspect of, OK, well, Ten Hag has done the same thing with you at Man United. He's, now, he's starting Jorge to be Mendes less, less and less relevant. Like, where, where does, and Portugal, they're not a marketing sort of mm. team, are they? So like, it, it's going to be interesting to see, I guess, how, how it does happen. He could come out, and if there's a player that can do it, 100%. it's Ronaldo. He That's could come the... out and just first game score a hat-trick, second 100%. game just turns it on. So I've got, I've got Uruguay winning the group. Interesting. And that's where it gets interesting because Portugal go out in the next round for me. But big. if anyone's going to embarrass me and I'm fully <laughs> aware that Ronaldo could absolutely torch the, yeah. the group um, and score four goals in the group stage and they get through and, to and top it. But I'm predicting, I don't know, if there's this little bit of negativity creeping in, is he going to start overplaying because he's got to prove a point when he's on yeah. there? I don't know. He, he can absolutely prove me wrong and star, That's but... I've got them just sneaking in yeah. second and right. dropping out. Interesting. That's a big one. I'm going Uruguay top. Probably going to... I'm going to copy you a little bit, I reckon. Yeah. I think Uruguay might sneak at that top position. Um, I can see a South Korea nibbing a point from Portugal Sonny. or something like that as yeah. well. They've so, got the... Uh, Adamo's been talking him up as well for, for Napoli. They've got Kim at the back. Yeah, that's right. Absolute yeah, yeah, beast. He's yeah. um, a good FIFA. Good on FIFA yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. FIFA so, <laughs> so, yeah, they've got... They've got weapons front and back, so... You know what they say? Attack wins games, defence wins championships. There so, you go. And I think for the like of Kim Portugal, could be the man. I think Portugal could fall into that scenario a little bit. They've never yeah. really had... Obviously, aside from like Pepe and stuff like that, mm -hmm. they've never really had the greatest defence. I mean, Cancelo yeah. would obviously be there. And Pepe's, Pepe's 38 yeah. or and something now. Is... I'm trying to think of centre-backs. I mean, unless they rock up with Pepe and Jose Fonte in there again, yeah. then you've got stuff to worry about. Yeah. The full-backs, they're OK. Yeah. Um, but that central sort of... Area could, could be a little bit of a trouble for Portugal. Mm -hmm. And we'll go into Group G. Yep. Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, Cameroon. It's an, again, again, that's it's another. Who's coming group. last? I'm gonna. I'm. I'm we just. I'm gonna back the nation of Cameroon. I'm gonna. I'm not to get through, but I'm gonna. I'm just gonna put Switzerland last. Interesting. Oh, I'm gonna I go, I'm gonna go Cameroon in, in third. Interesting. I like that. I like that. And Serbia to go through. Serbia to go through. I think. Serbia's an interesting one, like they can easily, seeing them come together and, and yeah. stick together for a whole tournament and, and, and work together for the, the greater good. I, 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 yeah, they've got good players, yeah, yeah. Mitrovic has just I mean, that's the thing. been I, on fire. I won't lie, until I saw a TikTok the other day, I kind of forgot the attacking power that they've got. Mm. Yeah, Mitrovic, Vlahovic as well. Yeah, Vlahovic. Like, I know the sort of Juventus thing's been a bit interesting for him. But he's one Still that, a gun. that if he gets kicking, yeah. he, it would be unbelievable. And I think Vlaovic maybe is like a systemic thing at Juve, yeah, potentially. I agree. I agree. He's, got, he's a young guy, he's going to be a gun. So okay. maybe this is going to be the, the moment where he steps out and yeah. reminds everyone. I think that this Serbia team could be, um, it, it could be an interesting one, one to watch out for. Milinkovic Savic as well, we know like, he's, he's always a gun one player of my favorite. that's linked to every club. In the, I, love a, I love a guy that's six foot two or three, wearing mercurials in the midfield, <laughs> uh, just strutting around. He's got that yeah, big, big presence and personality. And they do, I love him. They, the are, sergeant. they are a, a team and I guess a country that has a big presence as yep. well. So, I mean, again, Brazil-Serbia, that's, that's a big Massive. game. That's Massive. a huge game. You're playing and you're looking at, we, talk, uh, we spoke about previously, like the sort of the systemic approach by a couple of different teams and you're looking at Brazil yep. and Serbia. Yeah, you couldn't go further apart. Mm -hmm. You know, you got Brazil who, who are going to want to move that ball around nice and quick yep. and get it to the forwards, quickly. minimal touches as possible. Yep. Whereas Serbia, they'll they'll happily go through a Neymar. Mm -hmm. They'll happily go through you know Bruno Guimarães. They're going to make it hard. So there's a lot of interesting. I feel like they've met each other before in a group stage as well. Brazil for Serbia, but I don't know. I might just be matching stuff. Yeah. Uh, but th again, that's a good group. So you got Brazil, Serbia to go through. Brazil, Serbia to go through. Brazil finishing on top. Yeah. Um, I and think undefeated in the group stage. I think so. I think Brazil will be the one that everyone's like, wow, okay. Yeah. Like, I think Argentina's going to stumble. Mm. The other ones, like your Frances, your Germanys, your Spains, uh, th those types are going to sort of have to battle here and there. I feel like Brazil might be the one that get out of the blocks well and early, just smash it, top the group. Yeah. Interesting. Um, that's my prediction. Could be said. I'm, I'm excited to say it. I'm, yeah. I'm actually yeah. I'm yeah. not even kidding. Fernando is going to be. Camera. I had to say that for Fernando. If I didn't say uh, Brazil would go well in the group stage, you might have. Fernando coming back next week? I think he's coming back. Yeah, he, he might miss the start of the World Cup. 
Um, yeah, he's someone he'll be here that for Brazil does well. Yeah. Be, oh, mate. Yeah, so much. Topless running around there. Cool. Brazil, I feel like a lot of people's second favourite team is Brazil. Just yeah. for their history, just for their past. You know? 100%. When yeah, you're a kid. Dino Ronaldo. When you're a kid in the backyard, you, you, you think about the, the, yeah. the yellow shirt and the, the players that have played there. Did you see the uh, Nike ad yeah. with Ronaldinho? That was very, I'll tell you what. That got me. That got me well and truly over the line for the World Cup. Yeah. I was, I was sort of. There's so much happening in football. It's hard to like. There's games this morning. Yes. Um, it, it was hard to fully switch into World Cup mode. But when I saw the Nike, the Adidas, Adidas one was good to be fair as well. But as soon as I yeah. saw the uh, the four minute uh, Nike feature with yeah. Ronaldinho and, and Davids and stuff, it was awesome. And you can tell it was, I guess, a lot inspired by the sort of the nostalgic yes. ones of the past. Yeah. But tapping it into like the metaverse and all that sort of thing as Loved well. Loved it. Very cool. Very yeah. smart by Nike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Very so good. That's going to be one that the kids uh, talk about for a long time, like the the airport one and the cage with yeah. Cantona. Well, like, not to get too scientific with it, but like in 20, 30, 40 years, when, I mean, <laughs> who knows what the world's going yeah. like. And this is like the start of the metaverse sort of thing. Yeah. And be looking at this video saying that was like so Kicked old it off. and vintage and sort yeah. of thing. So yeah. it's, it's cool to see. Speaking about vintage, see that Roberto Carlos shirt the PFC's got inside. I haven't. I'm looking... Oh, I tell you what, it's a beautiful um, kit. I'm trying not to buy it. Just get oh, it's, it. It's not. It's not the cheap. one that I, <laughs> I I walked in yesterday, and um, the there was a Burkamp one. Mm -hmm. Big yeah, block, actually, yeah, yeah. block white writing, Burkamp, big number ten, bright orange. I think it's a Lotto kit. Yeah, can't remember what year it was. Whether it was Euros, maybe '96 yeah, or yeah. or '98, but. Um, Cracker, he's got some absolute some gold ones. out there. I think the pop ups this Sunday as well. So, if you're around here at Ultra Football, yeah. come in, come Penecos, down because it's obviously open in Penecos. So come Always in. a good day. Say hi. It's, uh, it's busy for us on the floor. Yeah, but, but it's a good yep. day. It's, yep. good, day. it's yep. good fun. Now, you know, I think we, we've, we've, we've stored on it for a long time. Yeah. Good day. Let's, Let's do get it. into it. France, it. Australia, Denmark, Tunisia. Yeah. Oh, I, I tell you what. I've got no idea, yeah. which I probably shouldn't say. I've got no idea. How, how weird is it, by the way? Like, we've, we've all touched on it, but it's essentially the same group as yeah, 2018. I mean, like, how do they I mean, look. How do they do that? <laughs> I mean, look, <laughs> there's a FIFA documentary yeah. on Netflix. Yeah. I have, I'm, not, I'm actually not watching it yeah. until after I've watched the, the first. Um, I've watched the first episode, and it's, it's maybe not eye-opening, because we all know what yeah. sort of goes yeah, on, but yeah. it, it is, it's, it's pretty yeah. interesting. It's... It, 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 <laughs> Well, that's a story for another day. Yeah. We can actually do a reaction to that podcast. Yes. Um, there's France. And now France, yeah. reigning champions. Yep. There's obviously that, that World Cup curse as well with all the, ch the champions of the past. I remember when Germany won it and then they just flunked it in the group stage. Yep. And, you know, France 2002. Yeah. And again, there's yep. just... It can happen. It's so strange and it shouldn't happen. Yeah. But and I'm a little bit superstitious, I can't lie. I, you can I, I love that stuff. Like, I love the, you know, on this day last year, they won this 2 1, which means I love that thing. Yeah. You have to have them. You, they're in the, the top two? Top. No. Top two. I don't think France are going to make it out. And it's, I guess that, a little bit of it is influenced by the stupid superstitious. Yeah. But I think. That's, that's a massive call. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm happy for you to. Do it, but it's <laughs> as, so as long as you've got Australia in there. <laughs> well, you haven't, you, haven't snuck, you haven't snuck Tunisia in there. And nah, yeah, imagine that's all for nothing. Tunisia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going Denmark and Australia. I'll go Denmark to top it. Yep. And Australia to finish second. Yep. France third, Tunisia fourth. Quickly touch on Tunisia. I don't think there's going to be as, as bad and as poor and as much of an easy beat yes. as what people think. They had a really good. Uh, qualifying campaign leading up to it. They've yep. got a like, young Hannibal, someone like Nate would be probably watching quite a lot mm -hmm. playing in the championship. Um, and he's a good little player too. But they've got a decent little squad. How are they going to do against the I guess, bigger, stronger sort of teams as well? That game actually worries me a little bit because okay. the France game, whether we win or not, is up for debate. Yeah. But I can see that Australia come out, they give it everything, they're in the face, they're that Aussie spirit, like in 2018 where we gave them a good yeah. push. Yeah, yeah. It's a then it's, it's the next game where it's the unknown a little bit. Yeah. That's the one where we have to just have to win. 100%. I know we had it in 2018 with Denmark, and everyone was. Yeah. I was at the game, and everyone left the game going. Were you there? I was there. Oh, geez, I'm everyone left. Like, we were so fucking angry that we didn't get more out of that game because yeah. that was the one. Yeah, and, and it then was we, like a very Aussie thing to do as well. Yeah, yeah, the expectation. It's like this is the one to to we've got to win it, and then so if, as long as we beat Tunisia, uh, it's interesting. Have I don't to. Know, like again, it, we have to. It's going to be huge, to. but. I think France, and from the research I've done and the stuff that I've watched, because I'm a nerd and I spend a lot of time on love it. Love it, love it. The France, defensively, 
haven't been that strong in their mm-hmm. whole qualifying sort of campaign. Yep. They're playing that sort of three in the back sort of thing, which obviously transitions to a five in the back at times yep. as well. I mean, their fullbacks are freaks. You know, they've got Hernandez from AC Milan left back. Yep. And obviously him pushing up a little bit further, it's going to be quite dangerous. And he's one that, you know, Australia fans, if you remember from the last World Cup, mm-hmm. you know, he went down a little bit too easily. And, you know, mm-hmm. I think a lot, I remember on media, social media, a lot of fans are giving him a lot of stick. Yep. We had a bunch of boys that were at the house and, Hernandez wasn't a big fan. He'll, wasn't be, a big he'll be targeted. Player. Yeah. Um, and I think just the looks of, you know, no Pogba. I know Pogba's he's had his issues. At yeah, United but he's and Juventus. A, for all his faults, I think, in that dressing room, you saw it in 2018, yep. he, he's, he's a gun player when he's on. Yep. He, there's no doubt about that. And a leader. So and you take France, Kante, and, it up as well. Kante and Pogba out of there, that's two massive... Yeah, not even just players. I think spiritually in yeah, that team, 100%. that's that's two big holes. Yeah, and then and then with that, you you open up a spot. I think for the likes of like Tuomeni or someone who's a great player. Gun, but, but is it too early? Is what you're exactly. saying? Exactly. There's some of these Camavinga. players where exactly. There's some of these players where it's the first World Cup. Rabio's Rabio's the one that's not. If he's in there, you're relying on the other two to really. Yeah, exactly. Rabio might come. He'll score a worldie, but is he going to be the? And, and I think I think Truman and Camavinga are future, guns. future, future yeah. stars. Like Real Madrid's that, got it unlocked. Exactly. Those, yeah. That Real Madrid team with them, I think it's got to be. Those three are going to be uh, two, and, and then obviously uh, Valverde. I think those two are going to be instrumental in winning Champions League for Real Agreed. Madrid. So I'm Agreed. not saying that like, they're not going to be that the poor players. Yeah. But it is a little bit of a different, yep. I think, France sort of shake-up, yep. especially in that midfield. They're kids, essentially. Exactly. exactly. They're, they're, right. they're good kids, but they're, they're young. And, and I I'm, think, I'm still backing them, but I'm just yeah, trying, to, I think, trying, I, I trying to find your argument. Do help me do yeah. that. Um, the one person and the one player that I've been very excited to watch, and if France do buy sort of a side, if France do go through, yep. I think we'll probably win Golden Boot without a shadow of a doubt, Karim Benzema. Yes. And I think some people might have thought I was going to go to the Mbappe route. Yep. I mean, Benzema, we know the, the history and the past that he's had with that yep. French sort of whole shake-up yep, sort of yep, thing yep. and the drama and the stuff that happened there. Benzema, I think, is probably coming in arguably one of the most informed players sort of thing of the last year yeah. uh, into the World Cup. And I don't know if it's a point to prove, but just that, so, yeah. that willingness to win that World Cup at yep. 34, yeah, a bit, uh, bit 35? Of a chip on his shoulder as well. I think yeah. he's 35. Yeah, yeah, a bit of a chip on his shoulder as well, maybe. Like, yeah. They obviously washed him out of the whole organisation sort of thing for a very long yep. time. He'd be coming in and saying, hey, look, now look, I just won you a World Cup again. Yep. So, as a, as a country, I'm going to put you on the spot. Has anyone ever gone back-to-back World Cups? Probably Brazil back in the day, but like... I don't... I can't remember, but I don't think so. I don't so. think so. That's what I'm trying to think. I, unless it was We're like, probably going to get called in, out I know, for a some stupid obvious miss, one. But I can't think of one unless off it was the top back, of my head. Unless it was back, back in the days. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember one of the recent... I don't think France will go back-to-back. But it's going to be tough. It will be tough. I've now. got them... I still have them, just remembering the group, I still have them on top. Interesting. I, mean, Denmark, I still have them on top. Denmark again, before we get into the Socceroos. Denmark again, they're not an easy beat. No. And there's someone we're like, I think, know, we were speaking about last night, they go, well, which players do they have? And you struggle to list off a bunch of yeah. names, but they're a team that always do well. I mean, Ericsson, he's been one of my favourite players to watch from United. So good yeah. to see him back as yeah, well. Exactly. And also, I feel like that, um, I feel like that moment when that immensely tense situation happened and thank God it all ended up okay. Yeah. But I feel like that really galvanised that team. They really yeah, maybe took the togetherness to a whole new level um, at Denmark. They've got good players like Hoiberg. Is, yeah. He's scoring goals now for oh, yeah, Spurs. Darmsgaard, yeah. Eriksen in the middle is doing you know, free yeah. kicks yeah. and he's a gun player, creativity, creativity all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like they're... Christensen, they've got good players. Again, they, they could be one again that I guess pushes through a little bit further than some. Might and be. they've got the, they've got, so they've got Tunisia first. If they go and smack yeah. up Tunisia, so, so then they win. play France. France are, a, if we, if and we that, do them a favour, get a pinch of draw say, or something, they're under pressure in the second game. Team coming off a loss in the first yeah, game yeah, as well. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. So Denmark could be in pole position. Hundred yeah. percent. So let's let's we all hope for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think. Um, Denmark's a good shout. They're they're a good um, a good, good team again. Good just team. another hard group. I think I think that's the big thing. They're a good team. Yes. Yeah, they lack. Yeah. You look at you look at some others. Now Socceroos. I know I said they've got to get through the group stage. Yeah. Which it's a bold call. Back it. Uh, I'm going to say it again. Back it in. I'm going to drop it in. Just get Quall. Just 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 get him in. I'll just tell you what, just okay. let him let him rip on the last uh, twenty or thirty minutes yeah. of the first game, and then just start him for the rest, and then we'll uh, uh, Quall name sets as well. The last week or so. Yeah. 
yeah, get on him. Fly. You know what happened yesterday? I Mitch had a stroke of genius. Because the Twitter, because I've got Twitter, the login, was Twitter, like, Twitter was buzzing off. Twitter was buzzing, <laughs> got the cum dog kit uh, ready to go. That's unbelievable. Um, did you see that on A-League memes? The, yeah. The, the guy, I, I printed that shirt for the guy. Oh, did you? And he asked me, like, when I was at the front, and he said, yeah, I want cum dog 69. And I, I laughed and I didn't do anything. Yeah. He was, no, I'm being serious. serious. Yeah. Like, oh, a lot, of, a lot of requests coming through. Yeah, which, so I'll we might have to do... 25 and 69 just to keep the people happy um <laughs> there's a bit of cum dingo chat as well cum dingo, um, but it's good it's, so happy is it you love that yeah 100 percent. that's like the talking point for people around our game being excited for a bloke that's come from like relatively nowhere like yeah. i'm not gonna lie a few years ago didn't know who he was, I had no idea who it was. massive character head, massive character for the league he gets his chance at the world cup you can see what it means to him like, it's good for culture. We'll be talking about yeah. Cumdog for, yeah. for many years to come. And at the same time, it shows... You know, he came to the A-League. I know he's Scottish. Yeah. Australian somehow. I think his mum's side is yeah. Aussie. Came, came to the A-League. Through that, good Gun. performances in the A-League. Yeah. Came, he's, he's caught the eyes of Arnold and yeah. he's, in the, he's in the World Cup squad. He's an interesting player as well. Like, you saw the... You, I think it got ruled out, the Wellington one, yeah. where he's scoring a scissor. Like, he's a different type of forward where... Yeah, you don't know what you're going to get potentially I, with him. I think he brings a little bit more. It's a, it's a bit, a bit more brutality. Yeah, <laughs> you know, to 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 say it, than yeah. someone like a McLaren does. Yeah, like I think Cummings will have no issue in running and chasing a mm-hmm. France defence, and sticking in a sort of a late challenge here and there. Hundred like, To just sort of which is what you got to do against say, those teams. Um, yeah, I think McLaren. He's there to finish. I, I've got. I like McLaren. I know he's a city player. Like well, that, I like him, but there's always something for me that just. Is a bit questionable about McLaren, mm-hmm. and I, I don't know why. It, like, I mean, he scores a lot of penalties. He but, scores a lot of goals. But, that's but the... I mean, that's the thing. He's a goal scorer. Yeah. Um, Mitch Duke, oh, I've never been a fan of. Nah, I think we'll see minutes though. I think he will. He'll I think definitely. Uh, for whatever reason. That France game and stuff. It'll just be a little bit of. Does Does Duke start up front in that France game? I think. I think for the, for the crash and bash, like we've got yeah, to get into exactly. them and. We're not going to have many chances. We're going to be sucked deep a little bit. Are we going to have to play a route one and get it up there quickly? I think maybe. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he actually will. Which mm-hmm. I don't. I don't want him to. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather see. I'd actually love to see Cummings start. Um, but I think Cummings will be quite useful off the bench. Mm-hmm. Martin Boyle, I think, is a huge. I don't know if he's out for the whole World Cup. I think it's just the first game. I don't know what that yep. means they do with Tilio because Tilio has obviously come up for him. Um, yeah, he's an injury. He's like a yeah, like an injury just there, just in case. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, Boyle's fitness and stuff. I'm happy Tilio gets to go and like experience yeah, the. I agree. Because he was one of the ones getting left out, young guy, doing the right things, working hard. I know it's not ideal, and he might just be there for nothing. But at least if he's going over there and soaking it up, and hopefully that drives him further. The experience and, just to be involved yeah. in that environment, I think, is second to none. Yeah, agree. I actually, at that at that runway we had the other week, I was speaking to. Melbourne City player and, mm-hmm. and they did say that we all kind of were expecting Tilio to get that call up yep. and, and when it came in everyone was a bit really like sort yeah. of like, surprised um, the biggest really for mine still I still I, why do you call up Langerak out of retirement oh. and then shaft him a that, couple of months later I, 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 I don't get it that it has to player be, of the season and you see what Vukovic did on the weekend and unfortunately Vukovic has got to become a little bit Hated, sort yeah. Because I mean, I guess he doesn't deserve it either. But Bad. Like, yeah. His, his stats. I have saw the been stat. Like the worst in the A league. The save percentage was yeah. the lowest. It was like thirty yeah. percent or something. And then he made an absolute hammer on the weekend. Just poor for first touch. He must be an absolute ripper lad in the in the dressing room or something. <laughs> you'd, you'd just for that. Because I guess that comes into it like that camaraderie of. Um, yeah, and and I think you look at that goalkeeper. You know, they say the goalkeeper union. You got Redmayne, Ryan, and uh, Vukovic. Yeah. From obviously, I've never been a part of it, but you feel like a red made Vukovic, they are great my Arnold's boys, and yes, I think that's my, that's been my only sort of criticism. I've never been an Arnold fan, I've always, I think it's always been Team Ange or Team Graham Arnold. Yep, I've always been Team Ange, yeah, yeah, um, Ange man. But uh, I think that's one of his criticisms, like Joel King. I know, I mean, like, no, Jason, our boy David, what did Jason Davidson have to do to get David went to Belgium to make the squad? I mean, he was didn't make it unbelievable playing in the top division in Belgium, like. How that makes sense. He can whip know. balls in like he's, I don't know. Yeah, 
I, shout out to Davo if he's watching. We 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 wanted you there. Yeah. Um, I, I, Dave, I would have taken yeah, him. I think he's you. I, I almost would have started him over Beige. And I don't yeah. think Beige is that bad. I think he's probably been one of the more, more consistent, which might be controversial, one yep. of the more consistent soccer root performances. I think mm-hmm. he's a solid... Bit high, like a seven out of ten player, mm-hmm. you know. Like, very. I mean, he might have a couple poor. Games There's a couple there. of like little shaky bits yeah, that like you might worry. He does about. make you nervous sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think just defensively, he's okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Langerak one is it's really hard. And Schwartz actually said maybe it might have been Schwartz or Tommy Orr. I think Schwartz was fuming, wasn't yeah, he? Schwartz I, was, I, 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 was I fuming. didn't I didn't see what he said, but yeah, I heard he, he was hated it. I think Tommy Orr actually said though, like he goes, I think for Matt Ryan it would have done wonders having Langerak there yeah. because Older Langerak head, is informed. Yeah. Exactly. He's Matt, I think Matt would have pushed him. I don't know. Again, I think Matt Ryan would have sort of playing. turned around to exactly. Yeah. To you know, I think he looks at Langerak with a lot more respect. Hundred percent. Well, well it, from how I would look at it, been through. Super, I, I still remember you probably. Too, do you remember him at Victory Langerak? I remember uh, briefly. I was he was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, he was yeah. just just this tall, lanky yeah. guy that was unbelievable. And then yeah, obviously he ended up Dortmund. Where would he go? Stuttgart. Yeah, that's I right. Think. Yeah, and then J League. I think he's player of the season. Like, yeah, and he's, and he's just such a big guy. Like, he's killed the presence. And, and Tommy always said he goes, I think having Langerak on the bench is going to push Matt Ryan. Yeah, and like, and competition for positions. Hundred percent. I think is the best thing possible for any yeah. team around you take, the world. You take Redmayne for getting us there. Yeah, that, that's yeah. you got You got to take look, him for penalties. Graham Martin would definitely put him back on. Yeah, I mean, again. Do the we're wiggle, not going to wiggle again, dance again unless we make the round of sixteen. We're not going to extra time for penalties. Yeah. So I mean, unless it's a, it's a Karim Benzema ninetieth minute. <laughs> it's nil all and sub him on. Sub red main Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you're a hero if it works. I mean, I remember we were here watching it. Yes. And, oh, when he subbed the red main on, none oh, of us were my happy. Goodness, everyone was. Uh, I was in disbelief. Yeah. I'll be. I'll be honest. <laughs> and then the, it worked out. But there's one. The one thing with the wiggle stuff that was happening. There was that one that went sort of straight down the middle, and because he was moving yeah, so much, yeah, 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 yeah. He'd, he'd already committed to go <laughs> one side. If he hadn't have been doing the wiggle thing, he would have saved it. He almost got it yeah, with his foot. So exactly. it's fine margins. If it didn't work, we're, it. we're all very glad it did, and well done, Redmayne, and you des- deserve to be there. But yeah, yeah. Uh, look, it's an interesting one. I we'll mean, see. I think Quo, I think even Tilio, I would have taken Tilio up. The fact that he's coming as an injury replacement yeah. probably shows that he's Quo, probably not going to get a lot of minutes. But Quo, Quo, man, he's like, I was saying yesterday or the other day to some of the guys upstairs, like, I'd always wondered, because it feels like he's going to be that generational talent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like, I wasn't old enough to experience Viduka at uh, Knight Stadium and yeah. then seeing him at Celtic and all that sort of stuff. Every time I flick on or see that Qual's done something, I watch what he's done, like the touch, lashes it, yeah. like with no angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels to me like those early days maybe of like Viduka and Knights being like, this kid is a freak, like yeah. he's unbelievable. Um, that's why I just, you know, if we, if, we, if we suck against France, I just want to see some of these chances, like let's, let's give him some time and see what he can do on the massive stage because he's a he's a big talent yeah and you want to just you just for me personally i just want to see australia go for it 100 percent. i've got zero what's I know the point what's i know the i've point? got us going out of the group i've got zero expectations yeah and that's yeah. what i've got some of mine for but that can work in our favor as well yeah like, exactly usually that's what worries me that tunisia game that's the expectation if there's no yeah. expectation the boys just go you know what fuck it france let's exactly. catch them let's go yeah. for it to a naked eye, like it's Tunisia. We could beat Tunisia, and yep. then we might draw one-one, and the people start mm. crapping on us a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it will be interesting to see. Then Qual off the bench. I mean, he can change a game. He's 100%. done it. For, I know he's done it for Mariners. It's just a different stage. Yeah. But he can change a game. Hundred percent. Even Cummings off the bench. Hundred percent. You might even start to look at the duo sort of partnership. Yeah. Where Cummings and Qual, they've played a lot together. Yeah. Tilio and McLaren have played a lot together. Yep. So it could be that double duo sort of thing of there's, going together. There's some exciting names. To, yeah. To, should be, I'm keen to look at. Kurstic as well. Kurstic, Moy, and McGree in midfield. Yeah. I think it's a very oh, Jackson Irvine. Yeah. Oh, who Love starts? Jacko. Who starts in that midfield? I don't know. So. Hurstich is has he is he fully I, fit? Yeah, that's the I, that's thing. A interesting one. It's been pretty quiet. Yeah, like I, I'm a big Hurstich guy. Like anyone that's going that deep in the Europa League and all yeah. that sort of stuff, yeah. he's yeah. got to got to be respected. And he's yeah. he's a good player. I love Jacko. 
Um, I, I got Irvine printed on. Did like you? My dad got Socceroos kit. For yeah, me. he got Irvine printed on the back. Love, love and Jacko. He's, he's so cool. Isn't yeah, he? like he came Simpl- in with the old Viduka shirt, Celtic 100%. kit. Hundred percent. The uh, most Sampoli player on the planet. Yeah, captaining yeah. the club as well. Like he, he's a big vibe. So I hope he, hope he has a good one. Moyes just like tried and tested. You know he'll. Yeah, exactly. He'll he's, put in a shift. He's a consistent player. He's yeah. good. There's yeah, the midfield. There's there's a few in there that. Stake a claim, it's a I guess. good. It's a good issue to have. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let us know, if it's Socceroos fans. Yeah, let, let us know, know in the comments down below let what us you know think. Your lineup. Uh, and the France game, France Australia here, Wednesday morning, six a.m. Is anyone with Costa? Is anyone with the the France's out yeah. early brigade? <laughs> yeah, I reckon. I it reckon. might be one or two. Yeah, one of the <laughs> only ones. <laughs> uh, and then we've got two groups left. We'll go through it. Are we are we going slow? <laughs> Should we be speeding up? Or yeah, no, that's, I kind of just realised that too. No, we'll, we, we'll quickly go through the last can, two groups. We can chat all day. Spain, Costa Rica, Germany, Japan. Wow, Spain, what a group. Costa Rica, Germany. Again, like where's, you said it, where's the group of death? This is another that's one. That's unbelievable. Costa Rica again. I mean, they had like that, that tournament. And I remember when Greece knocked them out. Some of us. The Greek gods, some of us not cost. Uh, actually, no, it was against Nigeria, but there was a battle between Costa Rica as well. Yeah. I'm going to go quickly. Oh, I actually don't know. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Costa Rica, what I just said. I'm going to go Costa Rica to finish last. I am going to follow suit. Oh, if, if Japan can. Japan's stiff to finish did they, is, Was it Kyogo they left out? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, If Japan's leaving out Kyogo. They must have a good squad. They have something going on. Yeah. Um, oh. Germany and Spain, you just know what you're going to get from them. Yeah. And I think Spain, and again, we mentioned previously, they had a very good Euros tournament. They lost to Italy in the semi-finals yes. in a game which couldn't have gone either 100%. way. I think if they beat Italy in that game, I think they win the Euros. Yeah. And I think you're looking at a lot more... I think people are looking at Spain in a, in a lot brighter light mm-hmm. heading into this World Cup. Uh, I think people have forgotten about them a little bit because it is a different sort of Spain squad from what I guess what we're used to. Yeah, in the, the, the names are... Uh, yeah, again, it's like that... They're superstars, but I guess maybe that France thing we were talking about where it's your Pedris, your Gavis, yeah, Pedris, Busquets yeah. is going to have to produce a bunch of games yeah. that just finishes his career at a high level. Yeah. Has he got it in him? We'll, we'll see. Did you, did you see David De Gea this morning? What Something did he do? Because De Gea didn't get picked. Yep. And they, they asked like the, the sort of FA, whatever it's called there in Spain, they go, we thought he, he was retired. <laughs> From international football. Oh no! De Gea just replies, "No, yeah, uh, no, I'm, no, I'm not retired." Yeah, um, which and weird he's, he's unlucky to not make. One hundred percent. They do have quite a few. So who Sanchez from Brighton, Unai Simon? Yeah, they've got uh, good keepers. I think um, Sanchez probably gets the nod. Mm-hmm. Oh, I feel like he's going to go Unai Simon. Yeah, but I think Sanchez has been great. The one thing that you'll notice with Luis Enrique, um, he seems to build the team like a club manager. Yeah. So he'll he'll make calls that, yeah, he, he's he's like this is what I think is going to win us and cohesively win us yeah. the the tournament. So he's happy to piss people off that whole yeah. like history of maybe not picking Real Madrid players all that sort of stuff. He simply doesn't really care. He just yeah. he'll pick the team. So who knows that if they go on a run, Pedri and Gavi are flying. I don't know, your Sarabias and all these people start yeah, chipping in. That's right, yeah. Um, some, they could be, they could be anything. Definitely, definitely. Another one, like uh, Oyazubo. Oh, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Like, tricky one to say. He's a decent little player, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Decent little player, too. So, yeah. I'm going to go I'm gonna go Spain and Germany in order. I reckon Spain will top the group. Yeah. And that, that, that's my little call. Yeah. Germany, uh, again, there's, the, this is those, the, there's a bunch of those massive nations that are in that, y- you don't know, like... Yeah. You look at Germany and they've still got the older heads like Muller and yeah, Neuer yeah, and Kobe. Yeah. And then you've got Musiala. There's so yeah, many, there's so many yeah. standout players that if they get on a run and turn it on, and definitely, you never know. So again, that's, that's, a, that's a very interesting group. I mean, you've got to have a Spain-Germany matchup there. You've got to have yeah. a Germany-Japan matchup yeah. there. There's some very, Japan, very good again, group stage. Could games. be a banana peel yeah, for exactly. someone. 100%. If you look at one of those two teams that maybe just they'll have the tournament that they expected, yep. Japan's that team that pushed yep. right through. Mm-hmm. Now, last but not least, Belgium, Canada, Morocco, Croatia. Yep. Now, I said the first three names. I go, maybe this could be the easy one. I think you chuck in the Croatia at the end and you look at Canada, their first World Cup, the campaign that they had. Exactly. So Alfonso, Alfonso Davies not in the squad. And, yep. uh, which Ma- is massive. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's sad. I, I, can you imagine Imagine making that World Cup Yeah. thinking Alfon- Alfonso is going to be your boy that like the whole country is watching and buzzing 
that's massive. And you spoke before about like changing room sort of characters. Yeah, and you, you can tell he's one. That's he's just a, a massive character. Big banter, yeah. man. Uh, it'd, it'd be someone good to have. Jonathan David is my player to watch from yep. from that team. Yeah, good striker. Is that uh, Lille in France? He's a he's a very good player, yep. and I think this could be this could be a start. I for hope him. they I hope they do well, Canada, especially with the World Cup coming up. Yeah, Canadian yeah, exactly. football starting to lift a bit. Yeah. Um, let's let's hope they go well. Whether they're getting top two, I think, is definitely a, yeah. a step too far. I, I don't think they'll make it. I think for this one, you could. I think this one's probably the one you can say Belgium and Croatia go through. Definitely. Um, again, what I order? I wouldn't breeze past Morocco, or mm-hmm. I wouldn't go past Canada too easily. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think Belgium, Croatia. I'm going to go Croatia top the group. Yep. I think I think it's Croatia. You know what you're going to get yep. from them. Yep. They're still a pretty Modric. decent squad. Um, Belgium's the interesting one. Yep. Yeah, because I mean De Bruyne even sort of came out and said it a while ago that mm-hmm. we, we missed out chance sort of thing. Like yep. that Belgium team. See, that's that's what maybe makes me think Belgium might go a little bit better this time because yep. that expectation's been pulled off. Yeah. Maybe they go. They just play with a little bit more freedom. The big thing, Lukaku, they're going to have to get a tune out of him. It's weird. Like, you haven't heard of him much yeah, say, since yeah. the, the whole Chelsea thing. Um, Hazard's there. Yeah. Like, Eden Hazard, he can't play football say, anymore. He hasn't like, played for Ancelotti's been giving him his chance to... Like, we all want to see him do well, but it just seems like he's, he's sort of done maybe at that level. But he's sort of in the mix to play. Um, but in saying that, yeah... The, Without the expectation, maybe they're going to Possibly. surprise because yeah. they've still got some, like Hazard's brother's probably going to. Yeah, like, I was going to say he, he's do probably well. Hazard's brother that that'd be De Bruyne, De Bruyne and Lukaku could easily get them yeah. a little bit Definitely. further down the Definitely. down the tournament picture. I see that Belgium. I, I, guess, I like what you're saying with them. I guess having that because again, they were everyone's dark horse. Hundred percent. The Euros for the last. They were meant Cup to win 2018. Yeah. And they just never, they're a team that happened that never really happened. Yeah. So, um, but Belgium will be an interesting one to watch. This could, it could be the one where they go through. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think there's, I think there's a few teams that are just a little bit better than them still 100%. right now at this I point. Think, I think you're right. So before we wrap it up, just your final prediction, who is going to win the 2022 Qatar World Cup? I think I, I've done the, the tournament builder a couple of times. The side with Brazil and Argentina, I think, is yeah. is locked. If if it's anything other than that, I'm going to be very surprised. Yeah, yeah. And I think the winner's going to come from that side. Um, Brazil, I feel like, might win. But I'm, my heart is telling me that Messi, his final crack, he'll just find a way. Um, and I think and I hope that we'll see I Messi like win it. the tournament. Mainly because, as well, I'm a, I'm a big Messi man. And the... The fact that some people, even pundits that are paid a shitload of money and, and stuff, can hold players to a, a statistic, I guess, where they have to win the World Cup to be considered uh, yeah. the greatest is just yeah. insane. Well, crazy to think. Yeah. You have to win a yeah, World yeah, Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's done it with the Copa. That experience as well might have the, the nation really believing that it can happen. So I would love to see Messi do it. Yeah. I hope he does. Brazil worry me though. I think it'll come from that side. And I think, who did I have? I have, what did I have? I think France will meet them on the other side. Um, so France? France will play Argentina or Brazil. I'm hoping it's Argentina. Argentina beat them in the it's final. A, it's a good final, that too. So plenty of stuff. It's exciting times. Who have I, you got? I, I've said for quite a while. I said actually very, very early on Brazil yep. and Vinicius Jr. play of the tournament. Player, nice. Yeah, so. I'm going Messi player of the tournament if they win. I think yeah, they'll, if, if I he'll, he'll do a nasty bit and they'll have to give it to him. Top, top scorer, quickly. You went Benzema, uh, didn't you? If, if France go through, which I'm they won't. I'm going Mbappe. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Mbappe yeah. is another one too. Yeah. Interesting. Well, at least if Argentina win it, they're doing it in a nice kit. So yes. It's going to be very, very interesting. Someone told me actually that that purple that they've used was out of, I could be wrong because I don't, I don't know, but... Someone was saying they've chosen that colour and that design as like a superstition thing. Ugh. They've had black as away kits. They've had this, that yeah, and the other. They've gone purple because it doesn't mean anything. So it's like yeah. there's, there's nothing attributed like to it. it. As soon as this came out, I, this was the one that yeah, I was going to Yeah, it's cool. Get. I like the flames I through it. it and it's very cool. Messy on the back. So like I said before, again... Thanks, thanks for watching, Mickey. Thanks sorry. for coming on. Yeah, sorry. I think we've gone it's probably... Been, it been, might been, be a bit of a record. It's but been a great <laughs> chat. Well, I, I tend to say it every week, but it's very, very... More-